the reason why we start to focus on that is because we have been noticing that the topic of biosecurity, probably depending where you are, because obviously I'm living on a different continent, but I think it's the same everywhere, that biosecurity as a topic, it's not easy. And for a lot of farms, they still see it as a huge investment in their time and maybe also financially. Um, so we are really investigating, like, what's the reason for this lack of acceptation? Um, and a big part we believe that's being underestimated is how we communicate about biosecurity with the farmers. And maybe that also that communication is not done in the best way to persuade them to do better, basically. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. And joining me on this week's edition of the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast is Dr. Nelly Kakabike. Dr. Kakabike is the CEO of Biocheck.Git. Uh, Dr. Nelly, thanks so much for coming on to the show. And if you would, why don't you start with a little introduction for the audience? Yeah, sure, Clayton. Thanks so much for the introduction and for inviting me, actually. Um, so, indeed, uh, Nele Kakweke, veterinarian, uh, did my studies at Ghent University, which is in Belgium. Um, so, became a vet 2016. And uh, actually, quite immediately after that, I started a PhD at the same faculty um, on the topic of coaching, guiding pig and poultry producers um, towards increased infection prevention, actually. So the main goal was to have a reduction of their antimicrobial use by focusing on improved farm management and actually also um, farm biosecurity. Um, and actually, because of those activities, already speeding a bit up to today, um, my promoter actually asked whether I was interested in um, yeah, exploring the opportunities of starting a company which was focusing on uh, expertise in livestock by security. So now, three and a half years, almost four years later, uh, we found a company where I'm in charge of, indeed, uh, all daily operations. Stop disease in its tracks. Improve biosecurity compliance and reduce disease risk with Farm Health Guardian. Why choose Farm Health Guardian? Automate downtime and health status management for large systems. Get biosecurity breach alerts for trucks and trailers. Prevent unauthorized access to your barns with controlled entry technology. And speed up disease investigations with automated traceback reports. Do biosecurity differently with Farm Health Guardian. Nelly, we're going to talk about biosecurity, and I'm really excited to hear what you have to say about how to influence biosecurity. Um, I know you're a big believer in taking a coaching and a very specific communication approach with pig farmers to try to get them to adopt improved biosecurity practices for our farms. Um, could you talk a little bit about um, what is the difference with coaching and just, you know, advising or consulting? Uh, how ultimately do you try to influence pig farmers to improve that biosecurity and prevent those infections? Well, if I may start actually mentioning that the reason why we start to focus on that is because we have been noticing that the topic of biosecurity, probably depending where you are, because obviously I'm living on a different continent, but I think it's the same everywhere, that biosecurity as a topic, it's not easy. And for a lot of farms, they still see it as a huge investment in their time and maybe also financially. Um, so we are really investigating, like, what's the reason for this lack of acceptation? Um, and a big part we believe that's being underestimated is how we communicate about biosecurity with the farmers and maybe that also that communication is not done in the best way to persuade them to do better basically um, so that's where we actually started and well it actually started with a colleague of mine her PhD before me um, but our goal was to really start to quantify and have a bit more structure behind the coaching approach um, and how we see coaching is really as a two-way interaction with the farmer where we are more focusing on their goals, their expectation, what keeps them up at night, basically, um, understanding a bit more the psyche behind the farmer as a person rather than focusing on all technical knowledge, what's going wrong, what are the current diseases, these kind of things. Um, so in that sense, we really see coaching and Probably it will depend on, on where you look for information. The definition will change. But for us, it's really part of, of um, improving the, the personal development of the farmer rather than providing them with technical knowledge. 
which is tough because I'm also a trained vet, obviously, and we're trained really to be advisors. I think this is changing with the newer generation, but still we're learned and we have thought that, well, we have the different diseases, how to solve them. So we're actually very good advisors. We go to farms to help them solve problems. And obviously that's very much needed. Uh, but in the bigger picture of a farm management, um, now that we have to pay more and more attention to which type of medicines we use and welfare and the entire industry is in, in, in a big change, in my opinion, um, this, this role is, I don't want to say outdated, we will need it forever, but there's also a part where we have to be a bit more careful, I think, with this interaction with the farmer and how to help them really in the long run. Um, so again, never want to say that an advisor, a true veterinary practitioner is not needed, but I think it's also good if, if we're talking about management and a bigger picture of the farm, that we also have these people who can spend time, a couple of hours on the coffee table with the farmer discussing where you want to go to in the next couple of years. And especially with biosecurity, which is not a quick and easy solution. Uh, that's why we try to link these two together, basically. What uh, what do you find as you evaluate the personalities of farmers? Um, do you find kind of a normal range of, of the personality profiles of farmers compared to the general public? Or do you find that uh, big farmers tend to have kind of some consistent patterns in terms of their personalities or maybe they're overrepresented in certain personality types compared to the general public? Well, obviously, that's a tough one because I've never coached just a normal person, let's call it. Uh, obviously, probably you do it in daily life without noticing. Um, but I would say it's quite a diverse public. Um, as a bit of a background, we also do a lot of coaching in Belgium as part of really a mandatory thing where we have to go to farms to coach them towards a lower antimicrobial usage. And obviously, that's a way different public than, for example, when you go to a farmer who has invited you, who's really already invested into making his farm a better place, uh, investing in biosecurity. So it really depends. Uh, we have both. But I would say, like, at least the people where you have a good and honest conversation are already the people with some type of interest. Um, and they're more easy and more open to discuss their problems. Obviously, that doesn't happen after five minutes. It depends on their personality. I would think like depending on, on where the people in the audience are listening to, there are also a lot of cultural differences. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a mix. And I want to say that after a couple of hours, if you gain their trust um, or after a couple of sessions, it gets more easy. Uh, so I don't want to say there's one specific type, but at least you need to invest some time and energy in it to gain some trust if you've never met the farmer before, obviously. What are the common um, things the farmer brings to you? Uh, I love when you said, you know, like we're, we're having farmers come to us and request this service, right? And um, part of the coaching is the two-way dialogue and asking the farmer, what do they want to get out of this? So what do the farmers tell you? What do they generally want to get out of it? Well, again, this will probably differ a lot between the different farmers, but um, I would think that they're kind of missing out on the fact that very often we have our combination farmer, farm vet. They're so used to working together. They're so used to seeing their farm on a daily basis. And when we come in there as external people, I think the biggest benefit is having a more objective vision of the farm. Um, someone as being actually truly honest on what they see. Um, and obviously, we don't have anything to gain, whether we're being honest or dishonest. And we just like to to highlight what, what's going on there by discussing with the farmers. Um, so what I think they want to get out of it is to just gain general knowledge on their farm and to see their blind spots. I think that's most important. Um, and they're really just willing to, to improve their farm and set their farm up for the future, especially those people who have kids that want to take over the farm. I think it's in everyone's interest to have it as good as possible. So, What, uh, what about your biocheck tools, um, Nelly? How do they relate to this process? When do you start to use those tools? Are they, are they tools that help you in the initial discussions with the farmer, the, the figuring out what they want to do, or are they tools that help with the, the back end and trying to find solutions or some of both? Well, actually, uh, the tool in itself was already developed over 20 years ago when I'm not even sure of the, the concept of coaching was ever mentioned in link with, with veterinary medicine. Um, but what we basically well developed, and not, I cannot say me because I, was, I cannot take credit for it, uh, but my promoter back in the day was to develop a scoring system to measure really the level of biosecurity on a livestock farm. 
Um, and so obviously it's not the same version that's still available today. We made a lot of updates, but it's still a free tool available to anyone. So people can go to our website, fill in a questionnaire, um, whether that's pig, poultry or cattle farmers. We do all of them, all the industrial species. Um, and they can have a look and have a score on their specific farm. So we question very broadly about how do they purchase from where they purchase animals? How do they depopulate? Where's f- food and water coming from? from all this kind of stuff. And in the end, they get a report between a zero and a hundred percentage showing them how they're doing in comparison to um, other pig farmers around there. Um, if we have enough data, we give them a benchmark for their country. If we don't have enough data yet, we give them a benchmark uh, based on an entire database. Um, and this is actually what we see as really the starting point. Um, a lot of people, of course, they have an understanding of what they do by security wise, whether they are washing their hands regularly, whether they are switching boots, these kind of things. Obviously, a farmer is aware of that. But by putting it really in numbers and quantifying it, um, you really have something to work with. So we see this really as a kind of a baseline to get started. And then in combination with your vet, with your consultant, your advisor, people from our company, doesn't matter. um, We can work on improvement plans, action plans to improve the situation. Um, And where does the coaching fit in? Well, obviously, we do it ourselves, but we also uh, give it as part of our trainings. It was actually requested by a lot of advisors and vets because they said, well, we don't have it. It's not part of our teaching in school. Uh, It's not something that we used to focus on in the past. And we're noticing that it's very difficult to convince farmers to make changes if we're talking about biosecurity because they really really still see it as something negative and it's not bringing a lot of them, especially in peacetime. Uh, If there's an outbreak, obviously everyone is bringing out the disinfection bots, uh, but in peacetime it's often neglected. So it was really open request that we started to, to teach on that as well and to teach other vets and advisors so they can do a better job, an even better job, obviously, uh, communicating with the farmer and trying to convince them that it indeed has its, uh, its benefits on the farm. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boring or Ingelheim representative to learn more. Nelly, uh, you know, the coaching you've mentioned a couple of times is not something taught in vet school and, and probably for most of the different educational programs that, that lead people to supporting pig farms, we don't get coaching formal coaching on coaching. So where does, for the veterinarians that are listening to this, where do they go to become better coaches? How can they get information so that they themselves can do a better job of coaching and not just advice, not just leaving them, here's the SOP of what you should do, but um, a different approach that hopefully is more influential. How can we get better at that? Well, obviously I can uh, make some publicity of our own trainings, that's for sure. So people can follow our trainings, that's one. Um, And what we, what I, you used to uh, have in my uh, my own PhD, which is very helpful, and actually the methodology that we use to more or less quantify or put our farm in a bit of a of a corner. I'm not pronouncing my no. <laughs> We'd like to start to do that again. That's not making any sense. Okay. Uh, wait. The question was how where can they find information, right? Um, So obviously people can subscribe to our own trainings to do with coaching and learn from us. Um, The disclaimer is obviously I'm also a vet and not a social scientist. Um, So if they're not following courses from us, obviously there are a lot of resources online. Or I can also advise that people, if they have anyone in their surrounding who did some kind of a more sociological studies, um, to discuss with them. uh, Because basic communication skills is something that you can learn in different ways. And if you learn how to be a better communicator, I think for sure you will become a better coach. So that would be like my general uh, take on that. Outstanding take home information for the audience, Nelly. I really appreciate you coming on, sharing the overview of the approach you're taking to improve biosecurity. I think it's very interesting and something that uh, people are going to get a lot out of. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. Well, Nelly, we couldn't do this if we didn't have an audience. Um, So to the audience, thank you very much for being a part of this. If you liked this episode, please take a moment, forward it, share it, uh, share it with your team. 
uh, you probably know somebody that's got a farm that could use some improvements in biosecurity, or you probably know somebody that might benefit from taking a more coaching approach to their on-farm communication. Send them this link. Let them get the benefit from this. Um, if you if you enjoyed it, like and subscribe to the podcast. That really helps this us uh, to get this message out to, to more folks. Um, for Dr. Nelly Kakabeke, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. It's been our pleasure to spend some time with you today, and we hope you have a great rest of your day.